Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Monday. It is the 20th day of November, 2023. Believe that we're coming toward Thanksgiving and going to the holiday season. I hope you had a good weekend and a safe weekend, that your family had a good and safe weekend, and that the needs of you, you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, who along with the first responders are every day out here saving lives. And those also that pick up garbage to keep towns and cities and villages and streets and neighborhoods clean and disease free. And those also that make deliveries, especially this time of year, uh, for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover the teenage and children that are victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People who are also the victims of prostitution and child prostitution, pornography and child pornography, human trafficking and sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators of these things. Double curses on those that profit from these things. And double curses on the perverts that create the industry for these things. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. Even this time of year, nearly 600,000 men, women, and children without rules over their head, more increasingly senior citizens, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So tonight in Minnesota, there's a scheduled basketball game. The New York Knicks are going to be taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. This is a very pivotal game, early season pivotal game. Um, this is interesting because the Knicks and the Timberwolves are extremely similar, very similar. The Timberwolves are not just playing well. They're number one in the West. When you talk about number one in the West, you're talking about in other words, they're ahead of, let's see here, they're ahead of teams like Denver, the defending champions, uh, Sacramento, Dallas, the Lakers, Phoenix, teams that were picked to some by some to go to the finals. They're ahead of the Clippers. They're ahead of the, the Grizzlies. They're ahead of, they, they are the top of the West right now at nine and three. But you know, it's very interesting when you look at both teams because, check it out, the Knicks have a stud in the backcourt that's now the primary focus of the team. They have a stud at power forward that was supposed to be the primary focus, but the stud in the backcourt took over, okay? They signed key free agents. They have a shot-blocking, rim-protecting center, they focus on defense. The Knicks are number one in opponents' point per game in the East. And Minnesota is number two in opponents' point per game in the West. Very similar. Okay? Both up-and-coming teams. Teams that have been built from the ground up through draft, through very selective free agent signings, through careful planning to, for long-term sustainable winning. For great drafting of talent and developing of talent. Both teams. So this is a very pivotal game for both teams. Now being that they are evenly matched. You expect Minnesota to win this game in their home court. Okay. Um, Minnesota is 8-2 and two in their last 10. The Knicks are 7-3 and three in their last 10. Um, very evenly matched teams. Okay. The difference is going to be in execution. That's going to be the difference here. Now, for the Minnesota Timberwolves, you know, they're, they're, they're starting. Well, first of all, let's go even deeper a little bit in the stats. Minnesota averages 36, 37 rebounds a game. I'm sorry, 46, not, four, not 36, I'm sorry. 45, 46 rebounds a game. The Knicks average 47 rebounds a game. The Timberwolves get 10 offensive rebounds per game. The Knicks get 14 offensive rebounds per game. The Knicks shoot 38% from three. The Timberwolves shoot 36% from three. They're very similar. Very similar. Okay. So again, they're going to come down to execution. Now, again, with the similarity, 
Look at the starting five for the Timberwolves. The starting five for the Timberwolves. You start in the backcourt. You start Mike Conley and Anthony Edwards. You start a small forward, Jane McDaniels. You start a power forward, Carl Anthony Towns, and a center, Rudy Gobert. The Knicks start Jalen Brunson and usually Quentin Grimes, who you're going to want tonight against Anthony Edwards. Okay? One of the hottest players in the NBA right now. R.J. Barrett is faced against Jay McDaniels. Okay? Carl Anthony Towns, of course, against our dude, Juju. And then, of course, Mitch Rob and Rudy Gobert. Now, this is, to me, the second part is where both teams distinguish themselves from their competition, the bench. The Knicks have Isaiah Hartenstein, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, and Emmanuel Quickly. Four very high-level players coming off their bench. They got Deuce McBride behind them. The Timberwolves have Shake Milton, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Troy Brown Jr., Kyle Anderson, a longtime Nick killer, and Nas Reed, who they just signed also to a mid-level exemption contract. Very tight bench. Okay, on both sides. Generally, both teams run a nine-man rotation. Okay? Um, this is going to be a tough game. So, execution. So, now, if you can get... I don't know if, if Quentin is going to play today. Um, again, this is where you want him. Your best perimeter defender on their best offensive player. That's generally what he does. But you're going to need that to have any shot <laughs> at this. Because as much as I like Dante, much as I like Q to, uh, Quick, and they can both play defense, they're not Grimes against this guy. Okay? So we may get Grimes. I don't know. He's questionable. That's going to be a big one. Okay? Um, second, I'm, I'm really liking Mitch Robb against Gobert. I'm really liking that. Okay, because Mitch Robb is out to prove that he's the best defensive center in the league. He's out to prove it. Okay, you can see that. Gobert is the is the gold standard at this point in this A generation at five in terms of defensive player. Him and Lopez, but Gobert's been doing it longer, leading the league. You know, always in the top three and rebounding, shot blocking, defense. Been defensive player of the year. So this is where Mitch Robb wants to be. I'm expecting big time, big time Mitch Robb fight today, especially in the offensive glass. That's going to be a key here because both teams depend on rim running, shot blocking, defensive anchors at the five. If Mitch Robb wins the battle of the offensive boards, which I feel very confident about, that's going to be a big, a long way to help the Knicks win this basketball game. Okay. Juju always plays good against fellow Kentucky dudes that are younger than him. He does. I don't know why he gets all up for games against Anthony Ambulance. He gets up against Carl Anthony Towns. He gets up. Jew gets up to play against these guys. So I'm liking that also. The only thing is Jew has to get out at the three-point line on Carl Anthony Towns. He cannot be caught under the basket. Carl Anthony Towns can shoot the three. And so you don't want to leave him wide open out there all night because he will hit that shot. If you put some body on them, as Ju can do, if you put some physicality on them, as Ju can do, you can you can negate him. And Ju is good at that. I like that also. Tough matchups are going to be R.J. Barrett with Jaden McDaniels. Jaden McDaniels got length. Okay, you got length. Uh, seven foot wingspan. You know, come you know coming out of University of Washington. You know he he's a lot of us liked him coming out of out of there, but we got R.J. Barrett now. RJ has sometimes problem with length when he went offensively when he's going to the basket because and Jaden is good on defense. Jaden McDaniels is not the offensive player that RJ is. So I don't expect RJ to have as hard a time guarding him, but keeping him off the boards and, and going against him is going to be some matchup. That's going to be a great matchup right there. I mentioned the Grimes Edwards thing here. So let's look at the worst case scenario. Let's assume Grimes doesn't play today. You're going to be starting um, a Josh Hart against him, okay? 
I want to tell you something. If y'all recall, Josh Hart could not guard Kyle Lowry, and he could not guard Jimmy Butler in his past playoff. Grimes could, which is why you saw Grimes get 48 minutes one night. Grimes could guard both of them, but he can't guard both of them together. He needs some help. As good of a defender as Josh Hart is, and he's a really good defender, he cannot guard this guy. He doesn't have the speed or the quickness to guard Anthony Edwards. Okay? I would actually rather see Dante start or quick. Now, we know for whatever reason, well, the reason is Tom wants the offensive firepower from IQ coming off the bench. I understand that. But I'd like to see IQ with him. Because one thing is because IQ has a chance to guard him. He's got the speed and quickness to try to stay in front of this guy. This guy is unguardable, okay? But he has a chance. And not only that, Anthony Edwards cannot guard IQ either. See? So that would help it a little bit. Or Dante. I wouldn't mind Dante either, even though, like I said, they're not Grimes defensively. Dante is a fighter. He's a scrapper. He, you know, he'll figure a way to be in there. And of course, if you leave Dante open, we already see what could happen. So I like those two. I don't like the Josh Hart, but I have a feeling that's what you're going to see today. You're going to see Josh Hart. If Grimes is not, cannot go, you're going to see Josh Hart try to guard Anthony Edwards. The problem is he doesn't have the lateral quickness to guard this guy. So this is going to be, to me, our biggest weakness right here. Conley and JB, Conley's an old pro, a good, solid defensive player. You know, they had him next to Mitchell, uh, Donovan Mitchell in Utah. Conley, is, is, he's a vet, but he's an old pro. He knows how to play the game. He knows how to play pro ball. He can hit big shots. Um, I, I still like Brunson is, is too much for him right now. Brunson is in his prime. Brunson is and not only that, as we can see, he's, he's, he's starting to get his rhythm. He's on a roll. I like Brunson in that matchup. So to, to me, Anthony Edwards matchup is the key here. As far as the bench, as strong as they are, then they got really, like I said, Nas Reed, you're going to have Isaiah Hartenstein. Kyle Anderson, that's where you're going to have Josh Hart. Troy Brown Jr., that's where you're going to have um, Dante uh, or IQ. And then, of course, you got Nicholas Walker Alexander, which again, Dante or IQ. I like our matchup against them. They're good. That's why they're where they're at. It's going to be a tough matchup, okay? But I like the Knicks. Uh, on that in that matchup, Nas Reed is pretty you know good. He may have an advantage on iHeart, but iHeart again. The thing I like about Isaiah Hartenstein is the same thing I like about Josh Hart. They're scrappers. Okay, they're very they're, they're gonna scrap. They're gonna fight with you. They're not giving up. You can embarrass them. They're gonna still come back at you. So I like that matchup. Kyle Anderson is a bit of a problem. He's always a Nick killer. From when he was on Memphis, he was a Nick killer. Uh, and he's still a Nick Clay. He played the biggest games against the Knicks. Okay. He he moves like a sloth. Like you know, he, like it's in slow motion. But he always gets to his spots and he hits big shots. Okay. And he makes big plays. I don't like that. I gotta give them that advantage there. Okay. So we're gonna see how this plays out. It's gonna be a tough game, Knicks Nation. Now, the thing is, if the Knicks are able to win this game, to me, this could be a watershed moment. Okay, really could. They just won three straight, okay? But, you know, they, they were really against teams they should be, right? You're talking about Charlotte. You're talking about Washington, right? Teams they should be. This is a team that they're evenly matched with that's going to bring out the best in the Knicks. Good thing is, we know the Knicks play very well on the road, okay? All teams play good at home, but the Knicks play very good on the road. So that being the case, we got a shot here. Okay, if the Knicks could win this game, it could be a start of something. You can you can start it. You can start the light fuse on a juggernaut. Okay, that's how big this game is to me. If they lose this game, okay, we keep moving on. But if they can win this game tonight against this team, who is at full strength? You know, this this could be a watershed moment in early season. You know, the Knicks could start could start something here. Start a run here going into uh, late November, going into December. So. Let's see what happens. This is this is a big one, y'all. So <laughs> this one, I definitely gonna see. Y'all want to definitely see this. This is gonna be a really good game. Um, and you know, a Tom Thibodeau coach team is coming out to play by their uh, record, by by what they've accomplished. About you know, Minnesota is coming out to play. It's gonna be a good game.
It's going to be a good game. We're going to see how this works out. And you never know which player. It's like the player. Which player is going to just pop out and show you what you wasn't expecting. So we'll see what happens. Again, um, Grimes is questionable. Um, he may, you know, looking at from what I've seen from Grimes over his first two years in the league, he's definitely going to want to play tonight. Wrist hurt or not, because it's the defense the Knicks need from him. But we'll see what happens. Y'all enjoy this time. This is a good game. Hey, listen, Nick says you got a team. Knicks Nation, you got a squad. Enjoy it. Enjoy what you have. Forget all the talk about stupid trades, NBA 2K trades, draft picks, draft, blah, 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 free agents. You got a squad. Enjoy what you have. I'm telling you, I haven't seen this in a long time. Enjoy this. And Minnesota is going to be there at the end also in terms of the end of this season. So this ain't no fly by night you know, flash in the pan. They're going to be there unless somebody gets hurt. They're going to be there. Okay. Enjoy. We'll talk on the other side. So.